and welcome viewers and subscribers of baby channels policy the son of nobe is my name and i hope i find all of you well it's a friday here in south africa as i record this and i hope all of you are already geared up for a wonderful weekend uh, but before we go there i want us to have a, a brief discussion here uh, the discussion that i want us to have pertains to some of the stuff that we are publishing on this channel some of the stuff that we're broadcasting on this channel because it seems that they are not everyone of course but there are a number of people especially those who support uh, nelson chamisa as an individual and as a political leader who believe that um we are in a way doing propaganda for Zanu pf they believe that we are here to water down whatever Nelson Chamisa is doing uh, in aid of Zanu PF, and this is what we want to respond to because, as we have always maintained, we are a news channel, we are a broadcaster which seeks to tell people the truth. We've got no reason to be doing propaganda for any particular party, we are not getting paid for propaganda. The people who do propaganda are either supporters of that particular party or those who are paid to do such and we are nowhere near either of those first and foremost i as an individual have suffered a lot uh, under the zanu pf government i'm still suffering a lot under the zanu pf government i left zimbabwe because zanu pf wanted me dead i didn't choose to come to south africa i didn't choose to leave zimbabwe but that choice was made for me because as a journalist i couldn't just sit and watch while fellow Zimbabweans were being butchered for having voted Morgan Songirai as their preferred presidential candidate, for having voted the MTCT as their preferred uh, party to form a government. But because I covered a lot uh, during the so called Operation Mavotera Party, where people were being harassed, where people were being intimidated, where people were being arrested, and people were being abducted and some of them killed uh, i ended up being captured in the radar of the state apparatus in zimbabwe and i had no choice but to flee my beloved country which is what i did in august 2008 i left on the 26th of august 2008 and came to south africa so there is no way i can then turn around and be a supporter of zanu pf and many of you would know that in 2014 while i was here in south africa six years after i'd come to south africa to live here i and i had continued to write about the human rights abuses in zimbabwe about the political and economic crisis in zimbabwe i was followed up with other allegations again that time uh, i was being accused of running a faceless uh, Facebook blog, Baba Chukwa, which had nothing to do with, but I knew these guys also knew that I had nothing to do with that, but because they wanted to silence me, they still charged me for being that. So there is no way I can then all of a sudden decide to be Zanu PF. But now we have to state it clearly also that we are not a, a channel which seeks to do propaganda even for the opposition because we have a bigger picture that we are looking at the bigger picture that we are looking at is based on the philosophy of a democratic and free zimbabwe on a prosperous zimbabwe this is what we're pursuing we are not pursuing the elevation of one party to the throne or the elevation of one particular person to the throne but we believe that if Zimbabwe is to heal from what it is, if Zimbabwe is to rise from the ashes that it finds itself in right now, Zimbabwe needs the best leadership it can get. And by continuing to poke holes into those that have thrust themselves in the limelight and are trying to become the next leader, we are not in any way targeting anyone, but we are targeting the Zimbabwe that we all will be proud of is of no use for us to prop up an individual and at the end of the day he becomes an exact replacement of what we had he becomes an exact replica of what he had 
or for us to elevate a party and then at the end of the day we get another zanu -Pir. We made the same mistake in 1980 where there were already trades of a dictatorship in Robert Mugabe. There were already trades of a dictatorship in zanu -Pir. But people, because they were tired of Ian Smith, because they wanted this to see the back of Ian Smith as soon as yesterday, they all paid little attention to the telltale signs that Robert Mugabe and Zanu PF were doing. And at the end of the day, they elevated this person. They said they were going to correct the, uh, the rest later. They thought that after they thrust Robert Mugabe into the state house, they would then be able to rein him in. They would be able to turn him into a Democrat, which he was not. And they failed. What happened uh, when he took over power? With the state apparatus in his hands, he butchered 20,000 people in Matebelele just because those people had voted Zapu. He claimed that he was fighting dissidents, but dissidents did not number as much as, as many as a thousand. They were less than that, around 500. But what did he do? He trained a specialized army which went into Matebelele and did not care about dissidents, but butchered civilians to the point of butchering 20,000. That's a genocide. And that was because people thought that they needed the white men out and the black men in. This is what happened. We are still suffering under ZANU-PF today, 44 years later, or close to 44 years after we gained independence. The country is still divided along tribal lines. The country is, being div is still divided along racial lines. There is nothing that unites Zimbabweans right now. There is nothing that binds Zimbabweans together. We still are in search of the elusive Zimbabwean dream politically, the elusive Zimbabwean dream economically, the elusive Zimbabwean dream socially. We don't have what we can call a united Zimbabwean nation. If you ask people, they don't know what makes a Zimbabwean. They don't know what makes uh, Zimbabwe is a country except that it is a land which has always been uh, in a perennial struggle for recognition, a perennial struggle for freedom. So, when we then come here to broadcast, to tell you about political parties, to give political analysis, that is what we base ourselves on. On the need to create conditions that are conducive for the building of a better, united, and beautiful Zimbabwe. We cannot unite a people by dividing them. We cannot unite a people by forcing them to support things that they see cannot be what will build or rebuild Zimbabwe. So, there is, let me explain, ZANU-PF, the party, that we all want to see the back of. But behind that, there is ZANU-PF, the system. This is what we must all be fighting because removing the party alone will not result in the Zimbabwe that we want because we would have removed the ZANU-PF as a party, a voluntary organization which doesn't think on its own, whose activities are activities of people who member it, individuals who have got their own thought processes, who come together and call themselves ZANU-PF and then do certain things, having taken certain resolutions based on a certain system that they believe in, a system of looting, a system of dictatorship, a system of intolerance, and a system of killing to get what you want. This kind of a system will prevail for as long as we beat around the bush, even when we see that people have telltale signs of being worse than ZANU-PF or of being like for like with ZANU-PF. So when we come here, when we dissect certain things, when we poke holes into certain leadership qualities of opposition leaders, it is because we are suffering under this system. And we want this system out regardless of who comes back pushing it. So. The ZANU-PF, the system, as I've said, this is a system of intolerance. 
when everyone who doesn't agree with you has to be labeled. And right now, with Zanu PF, if you disagree with them, you are quickly labeled an enemy of the state. You are quickly labeled um, a puppet of the West. This is what they are doing. Then we have in the opposition, the so-called mainstream opposition, a replica of the same system. Although this time, when you come up with a divergent view, when you poke holes into some of their leadership uh, qualities, you are then declared or labeled something. But because they are obsessed with ZANU-PF, they then declare you ZANU-PF. Because to them, Zimbabwe is either ZANU-PF or Chamisa. This is not the kind of Zimbabwe that we want. Because what is going to happen is that if in, in the event that Nelson Chamisa becomes the president of Zimbabwe, in whatever party he leads, forms the next government, what is going to happen is that they will spend their time, most of their time, targeting ZANU-PF. They will spend most of their time targeting those who disagree with them and calling them ZANU-PF. They will call them remnants of ZANU-PF. And where will this leave genuine democracy within Zimbabwe? Who realize that between ZANU-PF and Triple C, there are no saints and sinners, but politicians each fighting for what is going to benefit them individually according to the membership of that particular party. So when we raise these things, it is not because we hate Nelson Chamisa. I don't hate him. I've got no reason to hate him. But I hate a certain system which ZANU-PF inherited from this myth regime and perfected up to this point. A system which has seen the killing of fellow blacks, a system which has seen the targeting of a people, fellow Zimbabweans, because they are white. A system which has seen centralization of power in a place called Harare, where everything must be done from. When I believe in a system of decentralization, so I believe in a system of self-governance, in a system of devolution of power, where a people will first be allowed to be proud of who they are. I should be proud of being Soto, that I am. I didn't choose to be Soto. I was born into it. I belong to the Soto gods. They are the ones that are watching over me. They are the ones that I plead with. The deities, the Soto deities, that I plead with to be my interlocutors with the creator who created me and created them. So, whenever there is a structure that I have to wage, I must wake up as this movie, a Sutu man, plead with my Sutu ancestors, plead with them as my deities to say, I have this struggle that I'm fighting. Please, watch over me. Please, do the job that the Creator bestowed on you to do in protecting me, in guiding me. Plead with the Creator that I am a mere mortal. I have sinned here and there against him. Be me in my interlocutors. Plead with him from the spiritual realm and make sure that he forgives me, guides me, and protects me. First and foremost, as a Zulu person will be expected to do that as well. The Kalanga will be expected to do that. The Venda, the Nambia, the Tonga, the Ndebele, the Shona, the, Zezu, the, 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 the Karanga, the Ndau, the Shangan, the Chuao, all these people will be expected to do that. But also, I should be doing that while also thanking them for the resources that they gave to us as a community of Sutu people living in a particular area in Gwanda. To say, we are grateful that you gave us enough rains this time. We are grateful that you gave us enough masonja this time. We are grateful that you gave us gold in this particular area, which is inexhaustible, from which we are building certain things, from which we are building an economy for ourselves. And we promise that we are going to exploit, manage, and preserve this 
resource for the next generation. I'll be pleading with my pseudo gods. There's nothing wrong with that. But I can only plead with them or be grateful to them if I have total control of those resources. And I can only have total control of those resources if I have total control of the governance in that particular area. Not because I hate people from certain areas. Not because I hate people from Matopo. I hate people from Cholocha. I hate people from Torashanga. I hate people from Maranda. No. But because I love them. To love themselves. I'm proud of who I am. I am proud of what I have. I'm proud of what the ancestors have given me. So at the end of the day, this is the Zimbabwe that we seek. This is the Zimbabwe that everyone else should seek a Zimbabwe where people are proud first of who they are, secondly of where they are, thirdly of the resources that they, they, their place has been bestowed with and the power that they have to manage, exploit and preserve those resources. So this is the kind of Zimbabwe that we envisage and anything that stands against that kind of Zimbabwe we will always stand up against. So that is why we have always raised Red flags with the mainstream opposition, especially Nelson Chamisa, who seems to have enough support at this present moment to upstage what is there. So we want him to prove that he is a better or a better alternative from what we have. He cannot prove that when he imposes candidates in certain areas. For example, I'll give a good example. He imposed David Coulthard who fortunately became the mayor that we wanted. But he imposed him. He must allow the people of Bulawayo to say, we have among the candidates a man called David Coulter, who has what it takes to be the mayor, who has the vision for this city, who have the legal, the legal expertise for this city, and therefore we are choosing him, not to come and impose him. You saw when Nelson Chamisa held his last rally at White City Stadium and already was interviewing David Coulter as the mayor of Blauer. He tried to do, that, to do that in Victoria Falls. Fortunately, because the people of Victoria Falls understand who they are, are proud of who they are, and believe in themselves, they said, no, 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 no. We are going to choose someone that we, we want and their deputy. So this is the kind of Zimbabwe that we want. So we don't hate anyone. But we hate a certain system. And if you come pushing that kind of a system, regardless of who you are, regardless of which side of the divide you are, we will always expose you. We will always raise red flags with you. So I hope this circles everything. We are not a channel which seeks to elevate political people or political parties. But we are a channel that seeks to tell Zimbabweans the truth so that they can choose knowingly from a, a position of knowledge. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it. But also, raise your views. Where you believe that we're getting it wrong, continue to call us to order. Because at the end of the day, the idea is to create a Zimbabwe, which we will all be proud of.